very deep kind of loss that we experience is when we compare ourselves with other people. Comparison always creates a sense of loss if we are feeling inferior. So when that is that sense of loss of self-respect, even then that will create pain. Spirituality teaches us each one is a unique being. Unique, own strengths, qualities, and a lot of karmic accounts that we've carried in the past. You know, a lot of reasons why we are all different mm -hmm. is because of deep karma that we have created in many, many, many births before. And so we can find sometimes that somebody is working very hard, still not getting the results. And somebody doesn't seem to be putting in too much effort and still seems to be getting so much. In results, you're talking about uh, Any kind in of spiritualism result. or in... Even in... In materialistic the, uh, achievements you know some mm. people might not even a child a child is born musician somebody is a born swimmer yeah somebody is born athlete born golfers yeah you want uh, so everybody looks different everybody's achievements are different because we're all unique unique in terms of our personality traits and those personality traits are created because of our past karma mm -hmm. so even two people living in the same house mm -hmm. even twins Everything's same, even if they're studying the same amount of time, they will get different marks. And there should be no comparison. Karma? Yeah. So spirituality helps to answer all these questions. And so accepting myself and then maintaining my self-respect, moods will be fine. But every time we compare with other people and we feel I haven't got what I should have got, again a loss, there will be pain. But sister, you wonderfully put uh, about moods and uh, karmic uh, accounts. But <laughs> I come back to one thing. You work so hard on yourself. You get up in the morning, you do your uh, proper meditation. You're taking care of so many things. You're being aware. But there's some, something called habit. Yeah a word habit. I don't know whether to call it a strong sanskara or a trait. I don't have a right word for it. But habits don't die so soon, so easily. A belief system. <laughs> this is a belief system. Habits don't die so soon. So you mean to say there's nothing in the world called habit? No, no, there are habits. Habits created by repeating anything number of times is a habit. I thought that was practice. Yeah, but it's created by doing it a number of times. And now if I want to change a habit, first I have to be very clear what I want to create and then just do it a number of times. Hmm. And I'll be creating another habit. So at least let me finish this belief system that habits don't change. Hmm. Habits don't die fast. No, it's my habit. I created it and I can change it by creating a new habit. Actually, why habits don't die fast? We can replace. We were not replacing it. We were trying to erase it. Erase it. We just said, this habit should go. More important was, what should get created instead of it? So there are two things that have to happen simultaneously, construction and mm. destruction. Destroying the old habit, but by creating a new habit and actually focusing on creating the new habit. If a child is uh, playing with a knife, and if I give him a chocolate, right, and he leave that thing, absolutely, and take the chocolate, absolutely. If I go fight, he might, you know, cut his hands. Right, because if you're trying to pull the knife forcefully, it will cut, which means the habit only gets worse because the sanskar becomes deeper and deeper the more we keep on thinking about it and the more everyone around us seems to be talking about it don't get so angry don't get so angry you're always angry you keep shouting so much is this the way to behave is this the way you should have done this nobody's sharing with us this is the way you should have done this this is the way you can do this but this, this is also becomes a habit to go on telling your child why are you doing this why are you sitting like this why are you reading this yeah. why are you slouching why, why aren't you standing straight right. why are you wearing this shirt like this why are you doing this with non-stop running commentary what about that habit so criticism is a habit 
Judgmental is a habit. But they don't even know that they're judging or uh, criticizing. They think they, it, uh, that, that that's a part of the duty. So that's and awareness. they're doing something very nice. That's awareness. Like you said, morning meditation. There are four things that we need to take care of to change our habits. First is daily meditation. Because what does meditation do? It connects me to the core of who I am. So mm. It takes me away from everything around me and connects me to my true nature. When we talked about identifying with our emotions, yeah, you know, so we were identifying with emotions which were not our true nature. When I say that I am a sad person, absolutely, I am sorrowful, right. I am sorrow, I am right. this. Right. So that is not my real self. That's not your real self, yeah. So now when you sit in meditation and you connect to the core of your being and you create this thing I'm a peaceful being so here you're taking away the knife and giving a chocolate absolutely <laughs> yeah so, so now, you're not forcing yourself I shouldn't think like this I should not think like that yeah. that's a bad habit so now I'm giving a giving some something else to, to which to is the, the mind. truth but yeah it's the truth that's why it's a chocolate yeah so it's the truth Sweet. and it's a very comfortable feeling and because it's the truth I will be able to experience it. Just takes little time. But let me start doing it. Daily meditation is a very, very powerful technique to change our habits because habits are not something just superfluous. They're very deep. They're mm -hmm. very deep into the subconscious. So what will daily meditation do? Silence the conscious layer of the mind, the top working layer, and go into the depth and pull that thing out from the root. You know, like earlier we would say, okay, today my birthday or today New Year and I will not get angry from today. This was working on things on a superficial level, the top layer. And so it would just remain for a couple of days and go back. <laughs> even so not right. even Not even subtle habits, even, you know, physical habits like I will not eat this from today or I will not drink this from today or I will be on time, I will not be late. It just always seemed to so work for a few days. So many 31st December have gone like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because As we were working... As a child, I used to write in my diary, turning over a new leaf. How sweet. Ta yeah. 31st December, 1st I'll do this. <laughs> and then it would not happen. So many 31st December and yeah. Christmases and Diwalis right. and New Year's, New Year's have gone here, right? Because we were trying to change. The intention was very pure, but the method was on the top layer, whereas the habit was very deep, deep. ingrained. The roots were very deep. So that so, is in subconscious and I was trying consciously. Consciously. But even if you go on trying just consciously, 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 yeah. it does go into the it subconscious. It does work, line. but on even consciously, do the other thing. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? I didn't understand. In the sense like, let's say, I am normally late for things. So what I train myself is, I'm not going to be late today. I'm not going to be late today. That doesn't work. Today, I will be absolutely on, on time. time. I'm not to get angry. Can this I is... say today I'll be five minutes before time? Yeah. Choose. It's only a choice. Similarly, I'm not going to get angry. This is not the way I'm going to speak. This is not the way I'm going to behave. Today, I'm going to be very happy. Yes. I'm going to speak to everybody very nicely, sweetly. So this is the affirmation. This is because then how would the mind know what to do? See, we say affirmation, but why is an affirmation needed? It's a very clear communication, clear instruction to the mind. What do I want you to do? If I tell the mind, I'm not going to get angry. I haven't yet told the mind, what do I want it to do? So I haven't implanted the seed of a new habit. I only said, I don't want the old habit to work. I don't want to get angry. So I don't want the old habit. But I I'm, hate my old habit. Yeah. I hate myself when I'm angry. Yeah. I hate when I'm late. I don't know why it happens. Yeah. But unless you implant the seed of the new habit, mm. the old habit will not die. And that's why they said can habits you, don't die. Can you tell us how to implant this? In meditation, first stage is in meditation. That when we sit in silence mm. and don't think about the habit that you want to change. Okay. Just think about the habit you want to create. Don't think about the habit you want to change. But Supposing? not the habit which you don't like. Okay. The negative ones. I will not get angry today. Hmm. This. Let's say, 
even simple habits like related to our diet okay which let's say a doctor's given us an instruction that we shouldn't be eating this supposing i say i don't want to get angry and i start for meditation what is the way supposing this is my weakness whatever x y z whatever word we give it or a habit i want to get over it so what is the thought i have to replace that i'm going to be happy throughout i'm going to love people not even i'm going to i am a happy being i'm going to also means that there is something which is stopping me right now and which means some blockage is still there i am a happy being yeah i'm a loveful being loveful being i'm a peaceful being peaceful being this is me when we talking about our identity and, and i create peace wherever i go right and i automatically love, aut- automatically like we saw if we identify with our emotions we will expect them to come accept them and obviously they will come so now if we are talking about our identity then it should be the true identity and the true identity is i am a peaceful being and that is what we read in profound words to not look for peace peace is who you are love is who you are and we really didn't know how to use this or how to work with this but raj yoga teaches us peace is the original nature of every being every soul love is the original nature original sanskar of every soul all that i will do in meditation is i am shall we do yes. that now sure definitely okay let me sit back and remove the labels that i have put to myself over a period of time emotions which i made my identity removing every label let me look at myself the true identity who i really am i the consciousness the energy the being the power i am a peaceful being this is my identity this is who i am peace in my every thought word and action it's my nature independent of people's behavior and situation i am a peaceful being let me see myself today a new thought a new way of living om shanti om shanti i am a peaceful being that was very nice om shanti om shanti